everyone. So I'm here to describe five things that are wasting your practice time on an everyday basis. These are things that not only waste your busy moments with the instrument, but actually prevent you from attaining your goals and might actually make you worse at playing if you keep going. So these are really, really important things to keep in mind. So uh, here we go. This one's going to be a little longer, so I'm going to go right to it. Here are five things that are wasting your practice time and how to overcome them. So number one, eliminate distractions. It is becoming increasingly difficult to practice without a phone or tablet, but remember that these devices are designed very meticulously to keep you hooked on them and constantly engaging with them. Being bombarded by constant incoming messages and notifications will not only erode your focus, it will waste your precious time you have with your instrument. If you need to know the time, or time yourself, get a watch. If you need to use a metronome, get a real metronome. If you must use your phone to practice, try putting it on airplane mode. You can always answer your texts, emails, calls, or YouTube views later. However, other things can distract us too, like people and pets. If you practice in a practice room with a window, face away from the window. Otherwise, wherever you are practicing, close the door so people and pets can't bother you. Either way, schedule in the time. So if somebody asks you if you're available at that time, tell them the truth, that you're at work. Number two, the second thing that destroys your practice time is practicing the same thing a billion times and making the same mistake. Have you ever done this? too slow. Alright, now I can get it. <laughs> then you probably aren't thinking critically while you practice. Aaron Shearer once said that mistakes come from confusion and error, meaning that most of your mistakes come from a lack of awareness. By lack of awareness I mean not knowing your fretting hand fingerings, not knowing your plucking hand fingerings, a lack of awareness can also mean not knowing what your body is doing, like your shoulders, elbows, hips, and legs. Your fingers might not be on the edge of the fret, on the fingertip, or you might be doing one of those things that your teacher hates reminding you about. See my link to my first video in the series above. If the problem still persists, maybe the fingering you are using is just impossible for your hand, at which point it will need to change. Either way, a good habit to get into while practicing is what I call the test evaluate method. This just means you try playing it, but instead of attempting over and over when you make a mistake, you pause and ask yourself what you liked and how you could fix it. This means you are effectively teaching yourself how to play the passage and you constantly improve long after you figure out how to play the passage cleanly. If you can't play it cleanly, try to ask yourself if the passage has the musical direction, the character, the color, or the dynamics you wanted. Then devise a solution for that and do it again. Then repeat for hours. This strategy is good to know because there's this thing about your brain where it doesn't know what is correct or incorrect when you practice. It's just going to default to what you have done more. So if you made the same mistake a hundred times, there's a very high chance you're going to make that mistake again on stage. Remember that perfect practice makes perfect. Wrong practice just makes wrong. So the third mistake that we can make that is destroying our practice time is practicing fast all the time. If we keep making the same mistake, slow it down. Slowing down the piece with a metronome not only teaches us patience, but it helps us examine the inefficiencies we are making in our hand, helps us absorb the music more easily, and helps us see the details in our playing more closely. It's like putting a microscope on your playing. The less you do it, the more sloppy your playing is going to be. If you want to play faster, you have to understand how to do the same passage slower and slower with the same amount of control. However, this leads us to another sinister practice habit that can also destroy your practicing. The fourth thing destroying your practice is practicing slow all the time. This is a problem I see a lot more in advanced players. As they become more determined and approach progressively more difficult repertoire, they start practicing slow more and more often, which is usually a good thing. However, many of them make a crucial error. They forget to play faster. This happens for a number of reasons. More often than not, the written tempo of the piece they are playing is really, really fast, and they find it intimidating. 
They gradually increase the speed to that tempo when they quickly notice their ceiling. Once they find it, they keep pushing without analyzing their playing and inevitably live in fear of that final speed or play in that speed with increasing levels of sloppiness. In order to increase the speed, we need to practice slowly, but we need to do it properly. This means that we have to understand playing slow as a simulation of playing fast. This means that practicing a slow section with our hands flying over the place and our body full of tension will set our ceiling of playing much, much lower. This means that we need to test sections of the speed we wish to play them, meaning that we should play as little as two notes to a bar at full tempo when we are writing down the fingerings of our pieces. If you try it a few times and it doesn't work, change the fingering. If it does work, then you've chosen one that works, provided it fits your musical taste. Choosing a proper fingering and executing it properly requires a very strong awareness of our movements in both hands. While practicing slow, we need to play extremely close to the strings, move as little as possible, play as relaxed in our shoulders, hands, and body as humanly possible. It's also very helpful if you plan as much as possible, using staccato at the highest speed that you can handle. Remember to take those clicks out. <laughs> One other important note about playing fast is the mental aspect, which is significantly different from the mental experience of playing slow. When you play slow, you should aim to be completely conscious of every movement and every note. When you play fast, however, don't think of notes, but think of harmonies, bars, or rhythmic figures. This is called chunking. If you have a scale passage, only aim for the destination when you run it fast, instead of trying to be conscious of every note. At the same time, stay mindful of your mistakes and correct them as they appear. One way you can achieve faster run-throughs in your practice is to run your piece at tempo, slowing down at the moments that you anticipate you will play slower. This way you can isolate those sections and practice them on their own, while giving yourself a chance to run the piece in the parts that your technique can actually handle. The fifth thing that will really destroy your practice time is when you only practice the sections you find easy. Tied closely to this is practicing exclusively from the beginning and stopping at the same place and never continuing. If you find yourself playing through the sections you know until they're memorized and not being able to get through the first passages of the later sections, then go straight to the hard parts and practice them or you're wasting your practice time. Practice is about improving ourselves and that means that it will challenge you. If it doesn't challenge you, then you're not doing it right. The only solution to this one is to start your practice session with the challenging sections, turn them into technical studies, or start from the end of the piece and work backwards. This way you are always moving toward the section you are more comfortable with. So thank you everyone. This has been five things that are wasting your practice time and how to overcome them. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you again to Nako Sajita for helping me with filming, and I'll see you again in two weeks.